What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Next Level Teaching. I'm your host, Jeremy Anderson, here with my super dope co-host, Miss Tori Rodriguez, a.k.a. T-Rod. What's up? How are you, Jeremy? Amazing. How you feeling? I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. Ready to rock and roll? I am. I yeah, am. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm super excited because mm-hmm. we have Dr. Mark Boston here Boston? with us today, and he has up, so much um, insight, yeah. and so I'm super excited to hear more about him. It's going to be good. Um, but before that, yep. why don't you go ahead and hop in and let our listeners know yes. who we are here at Next Level Teaching and kind of where you're at right now yeah, today. Yeah, <laughs> So for, for one, we've got two guests, right? We've got Dr. Mark Boston and we've got my allergies in the building. <laughs> hey, allergies, you know what I'm saying? So if y'all hear a few sniffles, like, forgive me, I'm human. You yep. know what I'm saying? The allergies is something serious. But anyway, yes. Yeah, so look. Here at Next Level Teaching Podcast, we want you to laugh, we want you to learn something new, and we want you to live your best life in and outside the classroom, all right? And so we created this podcast for you, and all we ask you to do in return, it's a free resource for you, all we ask you to do in return is to write us for review. Yeah. And do we want any type of review? No, we want our favorites, yeah. our favorites, our five star, and I think you have a yes. review to read to us, and I'm yes. super excited, so shout out to this person. Yeah, so, so this person here says, um, QG. Fiona said, from its beginning, this podcast has been on the top of my list. For pre-service, first year, or even veteran teachers, this is a great resource. Jeremy, Tori, and their guests have such powerful things to say, and it's definitely worth subscribing to. Hey, that's what we want to hear. I'm pretty proud of that one. I love hearing that that they're... Thinking that it's great for everyone, that it's not just for new teachers, um, but that the vets can learn a lot from yeah. it too, which yeah. I think is super and we're important. Growing. We're growing in different countries. Yeah. Right? Thailand, Zimbabwe. We're, I mean, this, this thing is getting expansive and, yeah. and we love it. And so we're glad that you all are with us today yeah. and uh, we're glad to have you. Well, Dr. You, Boston, how thank you doing, you. my man? Hey, best day of my life. <laughs> yes, that's what I love to hear. You know what I'm saying? That's what I love to yes, hear. Okay, absolutely. so um, I just want to let you guys know who um, Dr. Boston is. So mm-hmm. Dr. Mark Boston has been working in education for 25 years now, and he started in elementary school. Y'all know how I feel about that. Bless him. Um, and he also has had the opportunity to work as a counselor toward the beginning of his career, which I think is so wow. awesome. So yeah. he's seen a lot of different things. He's currently a middle school principal, um, and he's worked in administration for 17 years, been a principal f- or in administration for 20 and been a principal for 17, correct? That's right. Wow. And um, he's also a mentor principal, which I think is really awesome because he has the opportunity and the honor of preparing teachers and administrators um, for the next step in leadership, whatever that would look like for them. Yeah. And then lastly, the big thing is he's writing a book yeah. called Principal for Principals. Yeah. So welcome. Yes. Well, thank you. Thanks for having me. I yeah. Appreciate it. And I'm yeah. really excited to actually hear more about this book um, yes. because yeah. I know you said it has a lot to do with the insight mm-hmm. that you've learned throughout the years as being a principal and how you can help other principals grow, correct? That's correct. Yeah. It's funny because when, when we were, before we started filming, we asked you, you know, what was the name of the book? You was like, well, you know, or what's the book about? You was like, well, you know, it's, there are so many principles I learned over the years. And in my brain, I was like, oh, it'd be so cool to call it Principles for Principles. That's right. So when you was like, it's called Principal for Principles, I was like, okay, he's got, <laughs> exactly. he's got the juice. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, he's got exactly. the juice. Now, look, Tori just went through a brief bio. Do you tell the people who you are? Okay, well... As she said, I, I started as a classroom teacher. Hmm. Started as a classroom teacher. Started from the bottom, now we're here. Yeah, yeah. 1996 in DeKalb County. Awesome. And um, I had a, the fortunate experience of having a great principal. As a matter of fact, the principal who hired me was my former high school principal. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, wow. Yeah, at Southwest DeKalb. But Talk about full circle. Yes, yes. So I, I taught third grade. Then I taught, um, well, I served as a counselor, South DeKalb. And I was promoted in the building during my third year as a counselor to assistant principal. Mm-hmm. And that was very gratifying for me because I served as a counselor and assistant principal at um, in South DeKalb in the same community in which I in which I live. Cool. Yeah. yeah. So it was it was great for me. And then um I was promoted to principal in two thousand four. And since then I've been at five schools. Wow. So I, I think I've did all in the ca- same all, county. Yeah, all in the same county. Wow. Um I've been I've been labeled or identified as, as the turnaround principal, wow. uh, mentor principal. Yeah, I'm I'm the Come OG yeah. of, of the principal. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm one of I'm I'm probably the most seasoned principal, one of the most seasoned principals in the Cab County School District. Yeah. I got started when I was very young. I was 30, 
uh, when I wow. got started. So, um, but wow. I've learned a lot over the years. Learned yeah. a lot, and and where I am now, I don't see my title as principal, but where I am now, because of my grown faith over the years. I just consider myself just a man on assignment. Yeah. Mm. Just just That's sowing beautiful. seeds on different in different campuses. That's like changing it. lives beautiful. in different campuses. So well, I, while I have the opportunity to sow seeds at one school, when the Lord says it's time, your work is done here, mm-hmm. and man will say, Ooh. You're going to be assigned. Yeah. Reassigned. Yeah. yeah. But God says, Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you you already did what you need to do here. Yeah. yeah. Do the same thing. Yes. Yeah. There. And so we just keep running the play. Yeah. I love That's it. beautiful. Oh, this is going to be good. Because isn't that what we're called to do it, is right. we're called to sow seeds right. and and make disciples of all nations and help people grow into right. who they're meant to be right. um, and who God created them to be. Yeah, and right. so I just, I love that. I love that. That's how you look at it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think there are times as a teacher where we have to remember that as well as yeah. I am here to plant seeds within That's students. It. And we've talked about this a couple um, of times, yes, Jeremy, about absolutely. how you may not see the fruits of your labors yeah. within that moment and mm-hmm. that's okay, right. but you know that you're planting seeds. Yep. Yes. Yep. And, the, yeah. and the cool thing is you're planting, planting seeds in the lives of the students as well as the teachers. Yes. And now you are a mentor to other professionals, other principals. And yes. so that goes a long way. So how did you get there? Because some of our viewers and listeners are probably thinking like, wow, he started here. He became a counselor, then assistant principal, now principal. And that was a you know fast saying, move, right, honestly. Fast move, right? yeah. like, so wow. obviously you had something special going on, right? Yeah. What made you want to go into education in the first place? Like, we always like to hear about that. What made you want to answer the call? Because here at Next Level Teaching, we don't feel like this is an occupation or a career. Right. This is a calling. Talk right, about that. Right, Well, let me just say, my, both of my parents are educators. You know, okay. they, they both re, they both um, re, have retired. And I heard them over the years, they would encourage me. Not They didn't push me too much because they wanted me to figure it out on my own. So mm-hmm. I actually went to Morgan State uh, University um, as an engineering major. Mm. Okay. But that was one problem. I wasn't that good at math. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was, that was, yeah, that, 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 that was a slight problem. That yes. was a little right, problem right, there. Right. So I took an education class, and I was um, exposed to a program entitled the Center for Educating African American Males okay. um, during my sophomore year, mm. and that changed my life. Oof. That changed my life because it was all about me recognizing in that moment in that classroom that, I've been avoiding it. Mm. I had to go a a, a, a different route, mm-hmm. and that route was probably getting some getting some bad grades as an engineering student. Mm-hmm. But it took me to that classroom and hearing about the Center for Educating African American Males, and then I said, you know what? I want to be I want to be a part of the solution because right. we always talk we always have heard about the endangered species and and in the, in the state of the black black male so yeah. that's what encouraged me and then once I got into the courses I got even more inspired and you know I finished it with a BS in elementary ed and and then um, coming back home I had some opportunities mm-hmm. in uh, the Baltimore City area but I decided to to come home to teach for two reasons um, the cold weather kept me <laughs> <laughs> from staying there, and and Mama, <laughs> right, right, yeah. right, right. So Mama and that cold weather resulted in me coming back to the cab, and I uh, taught at third th- taught third grade, and from there I would just have to say I was I've been a listener. Mm. I've always been very coachable, mm. and even today, as a forty six year old man with twenty five years of experience, I'm being more coached than ever before. Wow. And I'm learning more so than I've ever, I'm doing more learning now more than ever, especially as my position as what I do transitions to more virtual. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. So, right. so we got to stay here. Yeah. Right? We, we got to stay here because we have some guests that's been teaching for four or five, maybe 10 years and some like you, 20 or more. Mm-hmm. So talk about the, the importance and the need for you to say, I'm coachable. Because some, after they get their doctrine and they put that DR before they name and mm-hmm. they get that status of a principal, you know, a, a lot feel like, yeah, I've arrived. Yeah. But for you to say that you're getting even more coaching and you're learning even more now than before, that's not the normal mindset. What, mm-hmm. what brought you there? And Talk about the importance of that. Well, one thing, one of my biggest, my, one of my largest 
influences is this gentleman by the name of Buck Godfrey. He was my high school coach. Okay. And he taught this us this principle of being humble and hungry. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and my being, team knows I'll be on that. Right. You yeah. know, and, and of course, humble, you want to accept all the accolades, but be hungry for more, 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 more information yes. and more knowledge. Yes. So I've had that philosophy for, uh, I've lived by that for a long time. Mm-hmm. Lived it by, by that for a long time. And you're right. Oftentimes people get titles, but for me, it's not a title. It never has been. Really, my, my motivation for getting the doctorate, to be honest, was because I told my dad he wasn't going to be the only PhD in the house. My, dad, my dad is the first Dr. Boston. Yeah. Come you're on. Right, you're right. Yeah. And I just said, Dad, you know, you're not going to be the only one. So I was inspired because I, be, I always... I always wanted to do what I told my parents I was yeah. going to do. You told them you'll be the first, but you won't be, be the, the last. last. Right, right, I love right. It. So I just so over the years, you know, after after getting the doctorate, then it became learning not so much because you were I was doing it for a class. Mm-hmm. Now it's truly about me growing as an individual, mm-hmm. and it's um, a different type focus. And right. you know, I'm reading more than I've read in a long time. Yeah, yeah. and. Um, improving or trying to sharpen my my technical skills yeah. right. and it's all about being in the game right you know my position is you know some people they they yearn to get they yearn to get put in the game they would say okay coach put me in the game yeah. right. but in order to be in the game you have to have the skills you have to learn the playbook right right you have to learn the playbook but see I'm at a position now because I'm older and of course there are people who have uh who who have some skills that I don't have right. mm-hmm. and I recognize that it's it not only is it put me in the game, Coach, it's now, Coach, keep me in the game. Mm. Right. You know, it's, it's <laughs> keep me in the game. Right there. As yeah. a matter of fact, I can play different positions. Yeah. You know, at, as an elementary school principal, um, I, went, I was at four different schools. And one of the schools in which I served was on uh, one of those uh, underperforming schools mm. lists, a focus school list. Mm-hmm. And under uh, the, my leadership and the great team, we were able to be removed from the list. Wow. Of the focus yeah. schools list. Results. And then two years later, I went came to Freedom. We call it Fantastic Freedom. <laughs> and we were on the same list. Yeah. And we were also removed from the list. Yeah. yeah. So we're talking about. How many about, years? I, I, this is my going into my sixth year at Freedom. Okay. So, but when we when I first went to Freedom, we had a CCRPI of well below 60. Mm-hmm. Now we're currently at a 72.6. Wow. Yeah. And the idea, and I, and I know the reason for that is because the leader is always focused on growth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. You know, I want to stay in the game. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. And I think when we have that growth mindset, it's the same thing we expect the kids to yep. have. Right. Don't have a fixed mindset, mm-hmm. have a growth mindset. Right. I'm learning, yep. especially during this quarantine, mm-hmm. yeah. and now we're looking at digital learning. A lot of the frustrations and complaints that come from educators, granted, it's I get it, but it's almost like, my word of encouragement to them tends to be the same thing that we would tell students. Yep. Like, you got to embrace adversity. Things don't always work out mm-hmm. the yep. way you want it. You know, if you can't solve the problem, you know what I'm saying, like find a solution or, you know, you can't control what happens, but you can control how you look at it. Like, mm-hmm. all the things we would typically yep. tell the kids, yeah, it's, true. it's like as adults, where even myself, I find myself complaining about things and the creator is like, watch it. And I'm like, yeah, okay. okay. You know yep. what I'm saying? Let yeah. me get my mind right. Yep. So I think that's... Um, that's refreshing, man. Well, and I love how you talked about humbling yourself yep. in that and yep. knowing that even being 25 years in the game, mm-hmm. you st- there are still people that have skills that you may not have, and that's okay. Yep. And to, to read. That's right. And that's something I think sometimes as teachers we can get in a rut with mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because we get in these professional development settings Mm -hmm. and we feel like some of the professional developments are things that we may already know and that may be true Mm -hmm. but there are other things if that if you already know this then find something you don't know right Mm -hmm. find something that you need to continue to learn about Mm -hmm. find something where you need growth in and figure out who those people are so what if it's outside of your school hours Mm -hmm. if you want to get better at what you do right uh, and ultimately who you are as a person Mm -hmm then you're going to have to work outside of your eight to four or whatever those yeah. hours mm-hmm. are to improve as a person. Mm-hmm. And that will therefore improve your teaching. And I think that that's so important. You know, you're talking about reading. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because 
you know, a lot of my students will tell me quite often, I don't enjoy reading. (laughs) And I say, oh, I'll feel you on that. I remember AR tests back when I was in middle school and I hated those things. I did because I felt like I was being forced to do something. Mm -hmm. Um, And I have learned to love reading Mm post-grad. And I've done a lot of reading in this quarantine Mm -hmm. time as well. Um, and I feel like I've learned a lot in this time as well. Mm -hmm. And I'm being pushed in different aspects of my life. And now I'm able Mm -hmm. to then take that and push some of my coworkers and have some of those conversations and build some of those relationships. And had I not educated myself, I would not be able to then educate my coworkers who then can change the way that they're doing things in their classroom. And it's a domino effect if we're willing to humble ourselves and realize that we don't know everything. Yeah. Yeah. So I think think if we can sometimes just say, okay, I'm not going to be lazy, mm-hmm. right? I'm going to embrace the hard thing. Yes. I'm going to have a hard conversation, mm-hmm. you know, in, in, in light of what's been happening in the world with the social unrest. And now, you know what I'm saying? After what took place with George Floyd, it's like the whole world now was like, okay, we get, you know what I'm saying? Where the particular communities are going to be dealing with. Mm-hmm. And so now I've got a lot of educators I know, they're reading the books. They're mm-hmm. asking the questions. Yep. They're, they're watching the videos online. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, we're having the a lot more implicit bias conversations. Mm-hmm. I know I'm going to be mm-hmm. recording a video tomorrow mm-hmm. doing some work for a school district specifically on implicit bias. And then I'll be doing one on equity, diversity, and inclusion. Like, So it's like now a lot of educators are gravitating towards that mm-hmm. because they're like, hey, I want to get better. Yeah. Right. I want to be sharper. Right. I want to be more informed so that we can help have this conversation and bring about this healing and to help increase student achievement. Yeah. I want to understand the plight of what these kids in the communities that we're serving is going through. Yeah. So we all all goes back to that mindset yeah. of saying, you know what, I need help. I don't have all the answers. I wanted to grow. You right. know what I'm saying? That's how you can make sure that you're not a narcissist. You know what I'm saying? Like, and stay in the game. And yes. stay in the game. Right. And, and for me, you talking about your CCRPI score, mm-hmm. um, that to me was very enlightening mm-hmm. because the school that I teach at, our CCRPI is very different. Mm-hmm. If we get anything below an A, we in trouble. Mm-hmm. And I know the difference in the demographics between where you teach and where I teach. And I think that that's a lot of the conversation that we've been having Mm -hmm. as educators um, and as a nation as well. And I think it's important for people to see that there is potential for growth. There is potential for growth within Mm -hmm. those schools and you labeling them Mm -hmm. as, you know, not performing where they should be Mm -hmm. and being on that like at risk list essentially is so frustrating to me personally because I'm like, these kids can perform. Mm -hmm. These kids can do what what other kids can do. They just need the resources and they need just something different and that's okay, but we have to accommodate to that instead of disciplining that. Right. Yeah. Can you speak to, yes. Yeah. Can you speak more to that? Because you've got a secret sauce. Yep. You're the one that's going to the schools and they're saying this school is struggling, so we're going to put you here mm-hmm. and then you bring it up. Like, yeah. give us like maybe the top three things that you have in your mindset that you're doing or tips that you would give to another principal, maybe a principal for some principals <laughs> listening, right? <laughs> All right. All or right. some other educators. Like, what are some of those core things? And maybe it's three or four things that at every school you say, these are the things that we have to focus on to bring about change. Because clearly you're getting results. You're yeah. going right. to schools that are underachieving and not performing well right. and by the time you're done, it's where it needs to be, and then they move you to the next school that's right, struggling. Right. So give us some insight to what you do behind the scenes. Well, a, a few of the key components would have to include, number one is culture. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, you know, I believe that um, climate and culture is, is the root, and everything else is the fruit. Amen. <laughs> so student achievement, test scores, and all those things, they come. Yeah. But you don't want to just have success. You want to. You don't want to have just um, a one-time success. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You want it to be a constant yeah, success. Sustainable. You Absolutely. want to. You want to sustain success. And the only way the, I found that the only way to do that is by having a strong culture. Mm-hmm. So I, that's been a key to my leadership going in developing climate and culture through relationships. Yes. Relationship it is. building with uh, the students, relationship with the community, of course, with the teachers and and just keep pushing that relationships. As a matter of fact, where I where I currently serve, you know, one of our four R's is re- 
relationships. We have these four R's, respect, relationships, rituals, and routines. Mm. And I like respect, that. relationships, rituals, and routines. Now, that was, those are our, school, our four R's for the school, but really, they're four R's, what we believe, they're four R's for life. Yeah. Because if you respect rules, yeah. mm-hmm. you're more likely to develop appreciation and respect for laws. Mm-hmm. Right? right, and relationships. The quality of your life is based on the quality of the relationships you have, mm-hmm. and then as far as rituals and routines, that just has to do with consistency mm-hmm. and, and and practice. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. So, culture building is number one. Yeah. Uh, the second one is engagement. Okay. Mm-hmm. You know, oftentimes schools is done to kids. Like they come Ooh. and we say, "This is what you're going to do." Mm. But if we could change the mindset. And treat them like the like the important stakeholder they, that they are, and get yeah. input and say, "This is what we're thinking. What do you think?" Mm-hmm. Right. So time. there, when you come from that angle, you're going to have a school in which your students feel more like they're part of the process. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's more ownership there, yeah. and then that child Mark who may not have liked school before, but because you asked Mark about school, right. he now. Is in, inclined Invested. and wants to come to school. Yeah. Right. So it's about building culture through relationships. Yeah. And and obviously, you know, having a sense of urgency. Mm-hmm. You know, one of the one of the uh, pinnacle moment, moments that um, in my school was took place my first year of, at Freedom 2015. There was a chart in a in a meeting, a chart of all of the schools, all the schools in the areas data, discipline data. Mm-hmm. Mm. And you know things become real when you have the visual, <laughs> yeah. right? So it's actually it was a, it wasn't a chart. It, it was yeah, it was a, it was a pie graph actually. Mm-hmm. And we had seventy five percent of all the discipline referrals in our cluster. Wow! And I was looking on the screen, and I felt, I just felt that that nervousness. Mm-hmm. I felt the 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 how the staff was upset I could feel it mm. so when we got back later that week I said so how did you all feel about that and they said we didn't feel good and mm-hmm. some of them had a problem with the data being being put on blast yeah. and I simply said so what are we gonna do yeah, there it that's is it. right there so, it is. Do it right yeah. so yeah. if you're upset about something what are you gonna do yeah. see I'm a, I'm gonna tie I, I come from a leadership perspective but just in general Instead of complaining, mm-hmm. let's 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 be more constructive. Let's be let's yeah. let's use our time more wisely yeah. and be solution oriented. Mm-hmm. I love it. Yeah. So you and I could I could see you in there too. Oh, that's what they said about y'all, huh? Y'all yeah. got this percent, seventy five percent. Well, what you gonna do about exactly. it? Exactly. <laughs> you know exactly. Well, and that's the thing. I, I mean, it. data doesn't lie. Like you can't. Like it is facts. what it is. Like these are the facts. Okay. Right. You, truly, you don't like it, but it's not like you can hide from it. Right. right. If you want to improve burn. something, right. yeah, like growth is painful. Growth mm-hmm. hurts. Mm-hmm. I believe me, I've been sending so <laughs> much of it recently. It's not fun. Straight Ooh, up. And Straight I, up. I'm one that like I want to run from that. Like mm-hmm. I don't like the uncomfortable. But who does? Right, who yeah. does like the uncomfortable? But the only way that you're going to improve as a person, as a school, is is through that growth and through that uncomfortable. Like sitting in that mess of like, okay, this is our problem. Mm -hmm. This is obviously something we need to talk about. Mm -hmm. Uh We need to own it. Exactly. And now what are we going to do about it? Right. Right. So what does that look like? What, what, um, what are some of the things I want to know that y'all put in place? Because that's something that I'm working on this year is how do I look at disciplining my students differently? Mm -hmm. Um, because we do know that, Black males do tend to be the ones that Uh tend to be targeted Uh within our discipline system in schools. Uh And so that's something that I've really been sitting in and thinking about as I step into this new school year. Um, And I've been reflecting, thinking about, is that something, a pattern that I've seen in my career as well? And trying to check myself in that. Um, And so how do we change that? Well, I think, you know, going back to the original question about, you know, things that principals could do, I believe it's about, again, culture and engagement. Mm-hmm. You have to have everyone involved in the process, give them an opportunity to give input. Mm-hmm. And engagement may come in the form for us. Every year we, inc- we increase our number of student clubs. Mm. So we have this saying at Freedom uh, that we create fantastic memories. I love it. Right. So my aim every year 
is to create a school experience in which every single student, every staff member, every parent, they feel they are proud to be a part of. Mm, yeah. yeah. Right. And and when you have that, when you have that feeling, you know, people they 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 want to come. They want to come. Right. They mm-hmm. they want to do more. Mm-hmm. And it's that's some that's that is that results and more effort without you saying you need to do more. Right. Mm-hmm. It's because you've already established the culture and we're in America. People want to win. Right. And so we have to keep celebrating. We do a lot of celebrating mm. at the school. We start off all of our meetings with what with, with shout outs and celebrations. We do that that's part of our culture. Yeah. yeah. To, to celebrate. So we celebrate at the beginning of the meeting, the end of the meeting. We always get doing shout outs. You we want celebrate. to begin and end on a high note. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. We celebrate our students. Um we celebrate our students who are at the top of the class, but we spend just as much emphasis on student growth. Yes. So we celebrate That's that it. student who may be reading um, two grade levels before, be- two levels, two grades below grade level mm-hmm. at the beginning of the year, but towards the middle, mm-hmm. he or she is only one grade level right. below. Yes. Celebrate the right, winners. right. Yes. So we do a lot of celebrating. Yeah. And so we celebrate all the stakeholders. We've had a program, um, MVP, Most Valuable Parent, mm. in which we celebrated our right. parents. We celebrated our most um, our business partners as well. Yeah. So everyone gets an opportunity to contribute to the success, and we want to celebrate Yeah. All those individuals who contribute to the success of the school. So a culture of celebration. Yes. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I got I a song it. for you that after this, and I'm going to play for you. It's a new song out, and I'm just going to shout them out for, uh, it's Lecrae and Andy Minio, and it is called Celebrate More, and I think mm. that you would love it. Okay. Um, and I just happened to find it the other day and was right, listening right, to it, and right, I was like, right, this is my new motto right, right now, is to celebrate it. more. Celebrate more. Um, and not look at the negatives of things, but find the positives to celebrate those things within it. Well, you know what we teach is we don't focus on uh, what's wrong. We focus on what's, what's strong. strong. Mm. Yeah. So we address the mm. things that's wrong, but we put that focus and that emphasis on what's strong. Right. Yeah. And so I think when we do that, not only for the kids, but we do that for our staff, that's what can help to shift that culture to create that culture of celebration. Yeah. Yes. That's rich. So I want to take a break real quick, if yeah. that's all right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I uh, want to shift into one of our segments that's called Take a Break. And I want you to tell me about um, your almost breaking point. So obviously you're not broken. You're still here with us. <laughs> right. um, but tell us uh, about one of your almost breaking points that you've had at some point within your career. Maybe a time when you felt like, I can't do this, or I'm not equipped, or I didn't sign up for this. It might have been an interaction with a staff member or admin or a student, but that moment where you almost was like, (laughs) that's it. Yeah. Had to think about that. He's struggling, which I love that. But one thing that that has come to mind, um, you know, we we always talk to make decisions in the best interest of students. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. And as a principal, we're, we're told we need to be a good steward of the finances and the money and, and the finances. Uh, I had to make a, a tough hiring or in this case, I had to make a tough staffing decision yep. that involved a staff member no longer being on staff, but the yeah. staff member would be working at another location. Yeah. Mm. But that wasn't a good decision. Mm. It was a good decision for students but the politics of the matter yeah. Okay. Yeah. made it not a good decision. Yeah. And I've come in con- I've had a couple of experiences like that. And I would yeah. just say I would just have to say just the politics of the job. Yep. Um, programs that are implemented at the higher level. <laughs> I love how Jeremy's laughing because right. how many times and have we had this right. conversation? At the higher level. And you know, and I'm you have this you have the playbook. Yeah. As a matter of fact, we have Based on the success, we know, know the play right. at the local level. Right. But someone figures they know your playbook mm, better than better you. than you know, and you wrote the plays. Ooh. Right, <laughs> right, Ooh. right. So that's that has me thinking. You know what? This is not what I signed up. Right, yeah. right. No, I designed the, the play. Uh, the, it was sent down. Right. The play is ordained. <laughs> right. yeah. You, you yeah. see what I'm saying? Right. Yes, and, and I operate everything I do. I operate. You know, according to his, mm-hmm. according to his instruction. Right. But there have been instances in which I felt mm, I didn't sign up for this. Mm-hmm. I yeah. didn't sign up for this because, and, and it was all really had to do with the politics of the job. 
And now, I think that that's what we found. Yeah. Is that a lot of people, a lot of um, our guests that are on, that's how they it's respond. Not the it's not the kids. <laughs> it's not the kids. It is yeah. the, the politics yeah. behind it. Um, and those who call in the shots, they ain't been on the field in a long time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's not the kids, but it is the kids that keeps them there. Yes. Right. Would you say that that's why yeah. you kept showing well, yeah. up yeah, to deal certainly. with that, some of that foolishness? Yes. Yeah. It's because you yeah. love these babies? Talk yeah. about yeah. that. Yes, because, you know... I've been a principal for 17 years, and I would, if I had to just describe myself as an athlete, I would say my first seven, eight years, I was operating on raw talent, mm-hmm. okay? <laughs> now, yeah. I have talent, but now I'm more spirit-led, yeah. so I think I'm even more unstoppable yeah. because I'm walking in my calling. As yeah. I said, I'm a man on assignment. I'm just not a principal. I'm a man right. on assignment, right. so when I have to engage in foolishness if if you will mm-hmm. or things that don't make sense i say you know i have i, I know at this point oh this too shall pass because mm-hmm. um Ooh. i'm here for a job yeah, yeah. You, you know and it, this is not gonna break me mm-hmm. this is we're gonna work through this it's gonna be okay yeah yeah and 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 think about all the students that i've had a chance to impact over the years they, yeah. they certainly are the the individuals that you know keep me grounded and also all of the um adults that kind of look up to me for guidance today. Yeah. yeah. All right. Wow. So the second part of our take a break segment really kind of fits so well with that. You were talking about all the students that you've been able to impact. So tell us about uh, a breakthrough moment that you've yeah. had, whether it's with a student or a faculty member mm-hmm. um, or another principal, maybe that you were mentoring, but like one of those breakthrough, like aha moments where maybe they were struggling and then they finally like were able to flourish and shine. When I was a counselor at um, McNair, I was dealing with a student. I was working with a student regularly. He was suspended quite frequently and, okay. and, and got into a lot of fights, had a lot of anger issues, and um, and academic and had a lot of um, behavior issues and academic issues. So you know, we we met pretty much every day. Okay. Um, so I had I was accustomed to seeing him like every day and. He came to my office upset. He came to my office upset, and he was crying. And by this time, you know, he had stopped with the anger. Mm-hmm. He, had, he had developed some coping skills. And I said, what's the problem? And he said, I just can't get it. And he was referring to his work. Mm-hmm. And he said, I want to be like you. I want to have a job with a shirt and tie. Mm-hmm. I said, no, sir. That, <laughs> this, this is not... This is not. Don't let that be your goal. Right, right, you know, right. I know that you 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 have it in in you. And I asked him what he liked to do, and he told me that he liked working on cars. Mm-hmm. And I said, great. He he said his cousin had a body shop, and I said that'd be a great. That's a great career. You can go into that. That's a great skill. And he looked at me. He said, I can do that. Mm-hmm. Wow. I said, yes, sir. And it just changed him. I, he felt confident because mm. my my guess is someone in his family right. probably told him it wasn't good enough. It wasn't good enough. Told him he had to go to a traditional four year college, yeah. and he didn't see himself as a student as being ha- having the aptitude and the and ability to to do that. So he was probably told education was again a four year college or university, yeah. not recognizing that. A skill and trade is education. Yeah. Right. So when I told him that, you know, he, he felt better. He, he, he went actually, I think it had, it had a lot to do with his confidence. He yeah. actually did better in, in class and oh. went on to, to, uh, to high school and was a yep. success. Wow. Speaking life. Yeah. And then I had another student um, who eventually um, became a principal. Uh, yeah, come on. I, yeah. I was at I was at summer leadership with all the assistant principals and principals um, a couple of years ago, and just chatting during a, a break. And she walked up, and she was like, "Hi, Mr. Boston," because she remembers remembers me at Mr. Boston. This was before right. I got my doctor. She's like, "Hi, Mr. Boston." Boston. I look. I said, "What are you doing here?" Right, <laughs> right, right, right. And she said, "Should I'm you be class or what? Right. She said, I'm, "I'm a principal." I was like, "Oh God, wow. <laughs> I'm feeling so old now." I'm, you know, I, I was. I'm I'm feeling yeah. old, but also proud. Yes, yeah. right. absolutely. Right. Man, talk about full circle. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. I'll, that's the first that I've, I've had a principal say, I've met an assistant principal that I used to teach. Like, mm-hmm. that's, that's, yeah. that's, yeah. that's special. Right. So I want to dig in a little bit more with that conversation um, from when you were a counselor. Mm-hmm. Because let's be honest, 
the way that education is pushed these days mm-hmm. is that you are, they say college and career ready, mm-hmm. but they really mean college ready. Mm-hmm. College to career, mm-hmm. not just straight to career. Right. Let's be honest. Um, and so I feel like there is, um, I, I feel like students think that there is no other option but college mm-hmm. and that in order to do anything else, you have to go to college and there's no... I'll be very honest with you. We have a, a school in the county that I teach in where there are a lot of those. It's essentially like a trade mm-hmm. high school. Mm-hmm. And I graduated from the county that I teach in and never knew about this high school. Wrong. Never knew it existed. Mm. Never. They have um, classes for cosmetology. They have classes for education. They have classes for nurses. They have carpentry. They have auto mechanics. Mm. They have all of those things that I feel like were in schools back when my dad was in school, right? My dad talks about being in shop or Mm -hmm. in Mm -hmm. auto and those things don't exist these days Mm -hmm. in your typical high school. Right. And the fact that I never knew about it and we got to take my students to that because I taught eighth grade at the time. We got to take them on a field trip to this school and students were able to see that there were other avenues Mm -hmm. because the high school that they typically feed into is, um, one of the high schools where it's based off of, uh, like what you want to go into next, the arts Mm -hmm. or engineering and Mm -hmm. science, like a STEM, like Mm -hmm. they have different little like pods essentially. And so for my kids to see that those aren't the only options, those four particular pods that they had, but you can go and you can do more. Mm -hmm. So can you talk as a principal more to that and, what you're seeing in education in general? I think that my primary um, responsibility is to educate, inspire, and give hope. Yeah. Yeah. I, I believe that by exposing the students to those different programs, that's 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 hope for them. Hmm. And I think that we should we should do that, um, especially considering they may not have anyone else in their network in their circle who is aware of those resources right. and those mm-hmm. outlets. Right. So their, their, their view of success or how to attain assess is kind of narrow. Yeah. And, and it's something, it's because of, you know, it's based on what they read. They said, okay, go to college four or five years, then you do this, do that. Yeah. But they may, a student may not have had anyone else to give him or her any other options. Yeah. Therefore, there's lack of hope. Yeah. So I believe it's my I believe it's our responsibility to expose young people to the different avenue, yes. av- avenues to success. Yes. So Absolutely. that they can have hope and to help them realize right. that the avenues of success mm-hmm. aren't just being a doctor right. or a lawyer or a politician or, you yeah. know, come like an entrepreneur. It's not just about like the amount of dollars that you make, right. mm-hmm. but it is about impacting people mm-hmm. and it is about finding what you love and yeah. what you're passionate about. Right. And so, cause let's be honest as teachers, we ain't at the top of that list for money. Yeah. <laughs> let's right. be very right. real about right. that. Right. Right. But it doesn't mean that my job as a teacher is any less Mm -hmm. than that of a doctor or a lawyer because of our pay difference. Mm -hmm. That doesn't matter. And so I think that sometimes students look at just the financial aspect of it Mm -hmm. and see like these are, you know, the the important, the big successful jobs out there. And they think that that's what they should be aspiring to, Mm -hmm. what they should be. Mm -hmm. Even though that's not necessarily what it's all about. Right, right. And And sometimes I feel like they they need to know that you have options and that it is possible. And there's Mm -hmm. value in those other jobs. Yeah, yeah. Like, so I'm going to share something now. It was going to be a secret. I'm going to go ahead and put it out there, right? Oh, yes. So, you know, we've got a nonprofit here in the States as well as one in South Africa. So we do a lot of work in the city of Cape Town. And um, Gavin Vandervit, he's like my right-hand man there. He's like our director. He works for the College of Cape Town. Uh And so, but he also comes from this community called Manenberg. Uh And there in Manenberg community, there are three main high schools. All of them are struggling. What we would consider Title I schools here, Mm -hmm. it's like prestige there. So you can imagine the level of struggle. And those kids that don't get opportunities in the other morning, I was having my coffee, and my wife's been asking me, what are you going to do to celebrate your 40th birthday? What are you going to do to celebrate your 40th birthday? And I was like, I don't know. And then I just felt like I heard it from above, 40 for 40. Mm. 
Mm. And we're about to run a campaign, and we're going to sponsor 40 kids mm. from those three sk- schools mm. to go to college. Awesome. Wow. So Tracy awesome. and I are going to pay for 10 of them, and I'm going to ha- reach out to some friends and colleagues to sponsor the other 30, 40 wow. for 40. So when we talk about wow. college, wow. you know what I'm saying? Like, that's going to be a part of, of my legacy there, right. helping these kids. And these kids there, mm. I'll show you all some pictures and videos, right? They're, they're looking like, I saw that twinkle in their eye. Right. Mm-hmm. They're like, it's possible for me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's right. like, yes, you have these opportunities and they can go into cosmetology or they can go into electrical engineering mm-hmm. or they can go into, um, you know what I'm saying, Arts. nursing, like yeah. all these different programs, right. but they would not have had an opportunity, right. but that's the way that we can impact them. So when you talk about making this impact and you talk about how sometimes we, we push certain things, mm-hmm. everybody's not going to go to an Ivy League. Somebody yeah. to do an auto mechanic school. Right. Like everybody has a path as long as we let them know what's possible. Right. Because I've had some teachers tell me, Jeremy, with your message, you make it seem like kids can do anything. I'm like, they can. Yeah. Well, Roger might not be cut out. I'm like, okay, you let him make that decision. Yeah. Right. But don't start planting seeds. Right. Maybe you should just do this. Because right. I no. had teachers that told me I was a high school material. Mm-hmm. Now we produce high school material. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I and so it. I think we got to be intentional about how we push and how we what, what we speak over the lives of these students. Yes. Yeah. 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 A culture of celebrating. Yeah. yeah. And we celebrate them ahead of time. Yeah. Yes. Telling them what you can do, what right. you yes. can accomplish, right. what you can Speaking achieve. Yes. So I, you felt that when he said that student was like, I can do that. You felt that. You grabbed oh, your chest like, wow. Yeah. Yeah. And you it were like, yes, you can do that. Right. Yeah. So that kid is looking like, wow, I'm good enough. Like, this is a possibility for me. That's, That's right. our responsibility. Right. It's not to dim their light. Right. I have found Ooh. that early on, elementary school, these kids are vibrant. Oh, I yeah. want to do this. I want to do this. I right. want to do that. Right. When they get to middle school, kind of moderate high school it's like they too cool yeah. yeah but it's not that they too cool that thing has been suppressed they've mm-hmm. been crushed. now they're questioning it's been crushed yeah. they mm-hmm. went from cool to crushed right now they're questioning is it really possible and i'm like if they could keep that same zeal that same passion from when they were little kids mm-hmm. yeah. and carry that thing throughout adulthood they'll go far yeah. yeah so it's our responsibility yeah. and all of you listening it's your responsibility and those of you watching it's your responsibility yeah. to make sure that they know what is possible right so and true. i think our accountability system um, has an impact on that high school child who may, high school student yeah. who may seem to be too cool. It's yeah. just that they all have genius. Yeah. They all have genius. However, if the, if the metric is having a certain score <laughs> on an assessment yep. and that's been drilled in your head, mm-hmm. and they don't your genius that. has not been celebrated. Right. Yeah. So now you're thinking, maybe I'm not a student. Yeah. Your creativity hasn't been celebrated. So that's our job to keep students motivated and celebrate their genius. Yeah. Even though the institutions that we work with don't look at the genius. Mm -hmm. They look at that bottom line score. They Mm -hmm. do. And that's where the challenge is. It's almost like we have to be like covert. Buck in the system. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, like I'm we're all in about the system. Yeah. The system. We're yeah. in here. We're going to tell you to do good with this test, but we also am still going to tell you that your worth and your value is farther than yeah. that. Yes. Do the best you can, but just so you, you know, a Roderick or Sabrina, I know you can go even farther than right. this. Right. And that's one reason why we really strive on having a lot of clubs. Yeah. Because, you know, the, the student, Mark, may not be the top reading student or yeah. math student, but he's a great artist. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, he's going to be one of my top leaders in the art club. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. So yeah. tell me something. Before you leave, I, we got two questions for you. We'll do rapid yeah. fire. Okay. We'll have you at it. I know you got to run, right? Uh, so tell me something here. What's one piece of advice briefly that you would give a new teacher, yeah. someone just starting off, they want to hear from the OG. What's that one piece of advice you would give someone that's just getting started or maybe that teacher that's been teaching for 5, 10, 15 years little... to keep them sharp? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Always think like a rookie. Mm. Even even after five or ten years, think like a rookie. Be coachable. Guard your mind. Ooh. Guard, Talk about that. Guard your mind. Watch what comes into your ears. Mm-hmm. Surround yourself <laughs> around positive people. I like it. My, my principal, um, my first year in 96, he told me, didn't know why he t- was telling me this. He said, 
stay out of the teacher's lounge. Yes, right, true. Right, right, right. <laughs> he, he said, stay out of the teacher's lounge. And, and later I learned that he was saying, basically, he didn't want me to be, he didn't want, yep. he didn't want me to be tainted yep. by neg- any negativity. Wow. Yes. Yeah. It's true. That's deep. It's That's true. deep. All right. So y'all heard that. Stay out the teacher's lounge. Yep. Stay positive. Watch what you consume. Watch what you feed your bread. Last question before we go to rapid fire is if you could change one thing yep. about the educational system today, what would it be? Yes. Excited for this one. The changing metrics for school success. Mm, mm. There it is. I love it. I love it. Yeah. All right. The rapid fire. All right. So, you got 60 seconds, yep. Doc. Uh-oh. So this is uh, one of my favorite parts. Um, I'm just going to ask you. It's fun. Don't worry. I know you're like, I don't know what she's about to ask I'm about me. To hit this button. The yeah. floor going to open. <laughs> Uh-oh. Yeah. So don't get any wrong, of pressure, course. Pressure. You know, uh, make sure you're answering correctly for me. Just kidding. Um, all right. Ready? Go. Here we go. Um, if you could have a super strength, what would it be? Uh, invisibility or, or I'm sorry, like a superpower. Would it be invisibility or super strength? Super strength. Mm. Oh, okay. Do you like texting or talking on the phone? Talking on the phone. Okay. What's your favorite day of the week? Friday. Ah, <laughs> yes. God bless you. All right. Uh, what is your favorite junk food? Honey buns. Oh. <laughs> you warm them up. <laughs> hey, that's what I'm talking about. What is your favorite childhood TV show? Incredible Hulk. Oh, okay. Who has it easier, men or women? Women. We Eas- have it easier? Easier? Do you give child like birth to children? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll keep going. I'm sorry. I'll let you pass on that one. What's the best age? Oh, 19. Okay. All right. And um, what does a person need to be happy? To know themselves. Ooh, that is a great one to end on, ladies and gentlemen. Dr. Boston. In the building. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so, much, Thank for you so much for having me. Thank yeah. you a lot of so fun. much. Um, I appreciate uh, just all of your insight on how you are changing your schools yeah. and just growing that bit like that culture mm-hmm. within them and giving them that like engagement and making them feel seen and known and heard and loved within their school. I think yeah. that that's so important and that's what so much of us need. Yes. We need more principals like you out yes. there. Yes. I really appreciate so it. So while you thank push you. that celebration of culture, we celebrate you. We thank you for what you do. We thank you. So while, you know, you, you, you literally tell your schools, Hey, I'm going to celebrate you. I'm going to honor you. And, man, we celebrate you. We honor you. Thank you for operating with a spirit of excellence. Yeah. Thank you for answering the call. Thank you for your 25-plus years of service. And we look forward to that book, Principles for Principles, coming yes. out soon. Yes, sir. Yep. Thank you. Yep. And Absolutely. thank you guys for tuning in and joining us again this week. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Yes. And then, of course, check us out on YouTube. Um, and if you like what you heard today, guys, make sure that you rate us. Uh, give us a review. You know, we love that five star, just like Jay saying over there. Um, And we'll see you guys next time. Have a good one. Peace.